is a WBBA Sports Special. High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Hardee's, Ramey Chevrolet, Twin State Distributing, Distributors of Rocky Top, Bluefield Community Wellness Center, and your local IGA store. And welcome to the high school game of the week here on WVBA Channel 6 Bluefield. I'm Pat Frizzell alongside me, Tony Colabro tonight. The Backyard Brawl as Princeton meets Bluefield. Tonight, the Battle of Mercer County. That's enough said right there. Oh, it means more than the Battle of Mercer County. You know, either one of these ball clubs could win this ball game and win the rest of them. They could possibly get in the state playoffs. So there's a little bit more significance than uh, the county. Very interesting point there, Tony. And uh, something else said now, both teams, uh, like we talked about before the game, have a chance to... Uh, to get into the playoffs still, but if one of these teams is to come away with a loss, that would pretty much do them in for the rest of the season. Yeah, you can possibly get in there with two, but when you lose three, it's pretty hard uh, to get in, and either team wins this game going on with the rest of the schedule. I, I would look for them to be in the playoffs at the end of the year. As far as the matchups are concerned tonight, basically, uh, it's the size of Princeton versus the speed of Bluefield. No question about it. Now, Bluefield has ample size in the line, but I think overall the edge and speed definitely goes to Bluefield with maybe strength and size uh, going with Princeton. But here again, uh, it's whatever you prefer. Myself, I've always preferred uh, size. I mean, if it has speed, but if it doesn't have speed, then I prefer speed because that's one thing you can't coach. The stadium, of course, Mitchell Stadium, both teams no stranger to this field, but interesting enough, this game was supposed to be played at the Annes Honeycutt Stadium, and that would have been the new home for the Princeton Tigers, but instead, the stadium was not finished in time. They, again, have to come here to the unfriendly confines of Mitchell Stadium. No question the people at Princeton are disappointed, not only the coaches, but the people. They'd rather play their home games at home, but... Here again, getting started when they did, and they just haven't completed it, and I think uh, they did the wise thing in coming over here and playing here, and this is a good stadium. It's not too far for Princeton to travel. It's almost like a home field. So again, it's the Backyard Brawl, the Battle of Mercer County, and we'll have it for you right here on the High School Game of the Week on WVBA as Princeton meets Bluefield. <laughs> Brazil with Tony Colabro. A beautiful night for football. Princeton set to kick off the deep man for Bluefield. Number 42, Charlie Thompson and Paul Wallace, the kick is away, will be fielded by Wallace at the 20 yard line. And he tries to get outside and he's going to be brought down. Close the football. And let's see, it looks like Princeton may have recovered. They did. as Todd Bailey recovers for the Tigers and right away a big mistake by Bluefield. Yeah, you hate that this early in the game, but you'd rather it happen early in the game than late in the game because you've got plenty of time in case they score, you can come back. But here again, you hate to play catch up this early. The turnover comes at the 11.47 mark of the first quarter. Handling the quarterback chores tonight, Smith Lilly for the Tigers. And they give that time to number 33. Lee Roberts. And that's Lee Roberts, number 32, that is. Just a power playoff left tackle, just mass interference. Really an off-tackle play out of the wishbone, not a true wishbone play. So that'll bring up a second down. Let's call it six now for Princeton. The ball resting at the Bluefield 11-yard line after the turnover on the opening kickoff of this ball game. And the handoff 
goes right ahead to the fullback. Joe repass, and he gets about three yards on the play. And that's going to bring up a, well, let's see, a third down and about two and a half now for Princeton. It looks like Princeton's made up their mind just to run power football. They haven't even thought about the option, uh, and they're just running right at Beaver, hoping, that, I guess, their weight can handle those Beaver people. Well, Princeton runs out of the wishbone offense. In fact, Coach Tribuco says, uh, don't be surprised to see him break out of the wishbone quite a bit this evening. And there you have the wishbone offense. And Lilly's going to run the option to the left side, and he's going to be brought down at about the three-yard line. That's going to be very close to the first down, Tony. Oh, I believe it is a first down. Yeah, it is. First and about two, two to go. Well, this would be a big momentum boost for the Princeton Tigers in a game like this. The oh. team that can break out on top first has such an edge. Oh, you do, because, uh, but here again, I, I don't think that you'll see Bluefield deviate from their game plan. Not this early. Heck, you've got three quarters plus going, almost a full game left. And again, there's your wishbone offense. Lilly, long snap count. The give goes to Howard. Touchdown. He goes into the end zone. is in their goal line and Princeton on every play has just elected to go with just power football with the exception of one little quick option but it was predetermined that the quarterback was going to keep it. Uh, I think that Beaver's, Beaver is going to have to stop Princeton because I believe Princeton has made up their mind they're going to run right at him and control the ball. And Sam is on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up and it is good. So with 9.54 to play in the first quarter. Princeton draws first blood. They lead Bluefield 7 to nothing. And Pat Frizzell back with Tony Calabro on our high school game of the week. And Jonathan Curry set to get the kick away for Princeton. And it's a low kick will be fielded by Trey Steckline. And he's across the 35 to about the 36 yard line. That's where Bluefield will start first and 10. And Tony, what do you say we go ahead and take a look at the uh, Bluefield offense? All right, we're going to start out with Stacy Carter at quarterback, Mike Miller at fullback, and either Benners or Scott at the tailback, but Steckline is a slot. On the ends, you're going to have Charlie Thompson and Steve Arnold or Paul Gravely. At tackles will be Chris Mead and John Lambert, and with your guards will be Joe Street and Kevin Ellison and, and Jamie Music at the center. Again, a fairly good crowd on hand this evening. It looks like in the area of 6,000 have made their way to Mitchell Stadium tonight for this heated rivalry. I formation now for the Beavers. And the gift to the first man through that time, that's Mike Miller. And he gets about four yards on the play, maybe five. That's going to bring up the second down. Let's call it five. Second and Now, both teams, as we mentioned in the pregame show, Tony, uh, pretty much a do-or-die situation if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. Oh, there's no question. No question. It's it. Stacy Corder at quarterback, the quick toss to the left side, and we've got our first flag of the ball game. So after the illegal procedure call on the Beavers, that'll bring up a second down and 10. And again to the second man through that time, and that's Ronnie Scott. He's all the way across midfield down to the Princeton 45-yard line. And just like that, Bluefield shows signs of moving the football. That's something that uh, the momentum for Coach Simon, I know he would like to get something on the board as soon as possible here because in a game like this, you hate to trail throughout. No, he caught Blue, he caught Princeton and Blitz and they hit his seam, didn't have any linebackers there and had a big game. Carter. He's my off goes to number 10 that time. It's Todd Benners and he's down to the 35-yard line where that's going to be very close to a first down first down once again for Bluefield. First down, first down, 
That's one thing that concerns, I know Coach Terbuco, he talked to us before the game and said that more than anything, the speed. Right, but those plays were up the middle. Now, those weren't outside plays, those were just quick, hit, quick hitters up the middle. Beaver's in a, in a power iron and this is an inside uh, formation. Well, it's going to run a little over. razzle dazzle that time on the reverse, and Trey Steckline is going to be brought down for about a yard loss on the play. So good pursuit that time by the Princeton defense. So second down and 11 now for Bluefield. Corner, and there's the option play to. He not run into his own man down there on about the 21. He'd have been in because he broke it clean. Well, Bluefield showing signs of really coming back in this ball game as the first touchdown. They turned the ball over for those of you who are just joining us. Turned the ball over and Princeton capitalized on the opening kickoff as Bluefield turned it over and Princeton took it in for six. And the handoff that time goes to Miller and he gets about, oh, let's see, three yards on the play. So they're basically getting three and four yards of pop there. Uh -oh. That's uh, nothing wrong with that. This is a, this is an excellent drive. Uh, Beaver started on the 35 and they've gone all the way down uh, to the 15. So uh, if, this is a great drive. I mean, they, each play has been positive. Well, again, Bluefield out of the I formation. Here it is, here it is. Scott around the left side, and he's tripped up at the 15-yard line by number 82, Stu Burks. So a good heads-up play that time by Mr. Burks. That was the first play that Beavers run pure to get outside. The quarterback just went, ran what we call a toss. He just reversed out, hit the tailback, pulled the tackle, got the fullback in front of him, tried to get outside with their speed. And that'll bring up a third down and four now for Bluefield. Again, our high school game of the week here on WVBA. Pat Frizzell with Tony Colabro. High formation and that time, let's see, I guess Todd Bitters it looked like. Yeah, just a lead play off the power eye, lead play right off the right tackle, right guard. So that'll bring up a fourth down fourth situation, down. and it looks like we will have a field goal attempt by number 17, Trey Steckline. So I guess Coach Simon now, basically... Steckline is going to hold. I think Arnold's going to kick. Steckline will probably be the holder here. Okay. Yes, so Arnold is coming on now to attempt the field goal. They'll spot it at the 20-yard line. Let's make this a 30-yard field goal attempt by Bluefield. The kick is away, and it is dead center. Exactly to play in the first quarter. Princeton still leads the Beavers seven to three. And Bluefield set to kick off as they line up all their men in the middle of the field. Arnold set to get the kick away, and Princeton is set perhaps for the onside kick, but Arnold kicks it away. And back deep, number 28, that's Chris Bailey. He feels it. He's across the 20, across the 30, he's still going across the 40, brought down at the 43-yard line. Good run back. A super run that time by Chris Bailey. So Princeton will start with very good field position here on their second drive. The ball resting at the 43-yard line. A quick offense now by Princeton as they're not wasting any time. Four receivers split to the right side. They try to razzle dazzle that time. And number 38, Mark Howard, is brought down immediately. And that's something, if that ball would have been dropped, Tony, it was behind the line of scrimmage, we would have had a turnover. It, not not back behind the line, but it was lateral. It can be behind the line, but in, when it's a lateral, it makes a different game. So again, Princeton with a very quick snap count here. They're basically getting the ball, bringing it to the line, and saying, let's play ball. And again, the reverse play to number 33. That's Roberts, and he's across the 50, still going. Brought down at the, let's see what the official wants it, the 39-yard line. Right. 
So again, Lee Roberts with a super run, and Princeton decides they're going to go with a razzle-dazzle again as they're trying to catch Bluefield off guard on defense. Four receivers again split to the right side. Smith Lilly. He's going to throw the ball this time, and he's brought down by Bluefield. And it's number 83, and we don't have him on our roster here at all. We don't have any Well, it looks like it was Street that time in on the play. Joe Street for Bluefield. And again, the quick play that time, and again it's Roberts. Picks up about seven on the play, but that's going to make it a third and still rather long. Let's call it five. Princeton has done a complete turnaround. The first time they got the ball, they ran bread and, bread and butter plays right up the middle, and every play here has been a, a razzle-dazzle. It's going to be a first down. It's going to be a first and down. Looks like we may have an offside call against Bluefield. Yep, that'll bring up perhaps a first down. We're going to have to see what the official says, and uh, we may have a measurement. Ball resting at the 35-yard line of Bluefield. It looks like it may be a little bit short, but the official is going to measure. Well, the offsides call, Tony, is going to bring up a first down and 10 situation now for Princeton. Perhaps you can explain a little bit what the Tigers are trying to do here. They're not huddling at all. They're just bringing it right to the line of scrimmage and say, let's go. Well, they're, they're trying to keep Beaver off balance. They haven't had a, hu a huddle on this drive, and uh, they've thrown what I call a trips right a couple times. Uh, they ran a double reverse. Now they're in the eye, but they still haven't gone to the huddle. Well, the wishbone offense now for Princeton. And that time, Roberts, or rather Howard, it looks like. Gravely. And he gets... Gravely got the tackle. Good play. Well, he's going to lose about a yard. So it's going to bring up a second down and 11 now for Princeton. Now they come out of the eye formation. A receiver split to the right side. <laughs> Lilly, straight drop. Throws the ball. Got a man wide. his hands and simply drop it and hold on to it. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him. Oh, that's, I feel sorry for the kid. I, I really do. You hate to see a kid do that. So that's going to bring up a third down and 11. Now for Princeton. And they've decided now to pretty much go ahead and huddle it up, I guess. Well, it was a dead ball. Dead ball. It okay. was the clock has stopped, so they've gone in their full house. And there's your wishbone offense. And the option to the right side is Howard. And he's down inside the 25, brought down at the 22-yard line. So it's going to bring up a... Fourth and about one. Fourth and about one. One and a half or two. Princeton, so it's As going to be an interesting call here. Now, that was, the, that was your basic wishbone play. Dove the full back. Pulled it out, pitched it, and ran your option. That's something, again, that Trebuco said before the game is uh, he thought he would break out of the option, uh, or rather the wishbone, rather frequently tonight because of basically not having a player that's a skilled position to run that sort of offense. Again, out of the wishbone, Lily is going back sneak. Sneak, and he gets about four yards. He's going to be all first down. Two yards. More than he'll need for the first down. Bring up a first down and 10 now for Princeton, and I guess that was the best play you can run in that situation. Well, yep. Uh, Beaver, they lined up in that wishbone, and when the team lines up in the wishbone, if you plug that middle, they can kill you hurt hard on the outside with that option. But here again, uh, fourth and the yards, you've got to stop the middle first. 147 to play in the first quarter. Princeton leading it 7-3. to three. Lilly throws the ball, and it's going to be intercepted by Bluefield. And let's see. Brought down at the 39-yard line. And on the interception that time, it's Chris Bailey. Correction, that time was Louis Bell. So Louis Bell picks the ball off and kills the Princeton drive.
split backfield now for Bluefield after the turnover. And that time is Ronnie Scott, and he's brought down for a long the 40. play. The 40. See Rodney Scott brought him down, so the two Scott hooking it up on that play, and Bluefield loses. Oh, let's yeah. see about nine or ten nine, yards on the play. Yards. Again, out of the I formation, receiver split to the left side. That's Charlie Thompson, and to the second man through. That's Scott. And he gets about four yards. He's still going to be about three yards short of the original line of scrimmage. He's going to bring up a third down and 13 now for Bluefield. Well, uh, Coach Simon tried to trick him up there and try to run a play. It looked like an obvious passing down second and about 19. Uh, he picked up about six yards, but this has to be a pass or a screen of some sort. I don't think he'll run a base play here. Stacy Carter, a six foot, 165 pound junior, the quarterback. Tonight for Bluefield, throws it out in the flats that time to number 81, Steve Arnold, but he's going to be brought down for a loss on the play, and good defense again by Princeton. Well, it had to be a pass, a screen, or a reverse, and Princeton just read the pass just great. Uh, number 82, Burke, just, just stayed home. As soon as the kid caught the ball, he threw him for a nice loss. And that will end our first quarter of play as the clock reads zero, and it's going to be a thriller tonight here at Mitchell Stadium. So after one quarter of play on our high school week on WVVA, Bluefield trails Princeton 7-3. And Bluefield set to get the punt away, our first play of the second quarter. Good kick. And a good kick that time. Ball will be taken that time by number 38, Mark Howard. And he's out to about the 45. We've got a flag on the play and a shuffle. Looks like we're going to have some kind of late hit, perhaps. And something you don't like to see in high school sports, Tony, is uh, the, begin the bench is beginning to clear out at Bluefield. Besides, we want to get some men over there and equal it up. Well, I know certainly electricity is in the air, Tony. But yeah, uh, well, the kid was out of bound, and then the, then the late hit, and of course, it's on the bench, and something broke out. What? I don't know, except that, you know, they had a lot of milling around, but I'm sure there's going to be at least one penalty, and maybe offsetting. And it's going to go against Bluefield. 15 yarder so it's going to bring up a first and 10 now for Princeton the ball resting at the Bluefield 40 yard line so whether or not the official saw the initial indication was that of course we had the personal foul but whether or not it was Princeton making the contact out of bounds or Bluefield still a little unclear on that play initial contact was a late hit on Bluefield out of bounds now what caused this scuffle I don't know but there was your penalty it was your 15 yarder out of bounds and the officials are doing a good thing right now but you have a game that's a lot of intensity they've called both coaches and told both coaches to get on the field and tell their kids to settle down and play ball and I'll tell you exactly what the official said the first guy that gets out of the line is out of the ball game 1149 to play in the second quarter on our high school game of the week here on WVBA Bluefield Smith Willie, the quarterback for the Tigers. And that time, let's see, Lee Roberts, it looks like. There, Lee Roberts. Lee Roberts, right, and he gets about a yard and a half on the play. It's going to bring up second down, and let's call it about eight yards. Well, interesting enough, I guess uh, Coach Tribuco of uh, Princeton and Coach Simon of Bluefield, both graduates of Concord College. True. Yeah. Second down and nine. Wishbone offense again for Princeton. And that time.
Johnson not going to get anything on the play. Mike Miller made great contact. Mike Miller. As Charles Mike. Storrs carries. And it's brought down immediately by Miller. In fact, Storrs is going to lose about a yard on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and 10 now for the Tigers. Lilly over Jeff Ellis, the center. Bring a man in motion to the left side. And the give was going to go to the fullback, but uh, literally decides to pull it out at the last I, moment. I think it was delay a game. The whistle stopped the play. Princeton uh, has led the last, uh, has won the last two outings. And that's something I know Bluefield would like to do is break that losing streak here tonight at Mitchell Stadium. Man in motion to the left side. Eye formation. Lilly throws out to the right side. He's got his man. That time, number 47. And that's Joe Repass, and he's all the way inside the 25 to about the 23, and we've got a couple flags on the play. I don't know whether it's a face face, a face mask, or a clipping. Well, that was clipping. That was pure clipping. That's what it was. That's the sign the official gave, and it was definitely against Princeton. So a third down and 11 now for Princeton, and I know having talked to Coach Tribuco before the game of Princeton, this game being played tonight at Mitchell Stadium would have been played at the NS Honeycutt Stadium. He says he doesn't mind playing here, but he certainly would prefer being at the new complex over there in Princeton. Lilly, straight drop, throws over the middle, and it's underthrown. Pass intended that time. Let's see. Well, Princeton brought a fairly good crowd out here tonight. In fact, it's just as large as it looks like as Bluefield. Ball fielded that time by Wallace, and he's dropped immediately back at the eight-yard line. So a good heads-up play by Chris Bailey as he's right there to make oh, good the coverage. stop. Quarter, cross out to the left side is to Scott. And he's brought down for about a yard loss on the play. So again, that stingy defense of Princeton. Playing real well. Real well out there Playing tonight. Playing real well. Two, in, uh, two outside linebackers are Todd Bailey and Stu Burke. And the inside linebackers, Dana Martin and uh, Scott Pock. It's a secondary being Charles Storrs, uh, uh, Chris Bailey, and Mark Howard. Single back now for the Beavers. And Carter's going to throw out of the he's zone. Got him, he's, he's got him, he's got him, he's got him. got him deep in midfield, and it's caught. A super pass play that time as Carter finds his man, Charlie Thompson, and he's all the way to the Princeton 47-yard line. Beautiful pass play. There it was up in there. Well, Princeton had a safety blitz. They shopped their safety man, so that left you in man for man coverage. Uh, with nobody in the middle to protect. It's a gamble. Coach Tribuca was just gambling, causing a fumble or getting a safety back there. But Beaver just got off the big play. Well, that was a gutsy play by Coach Simon Beaver, throwing out of his own end zone. Ken Carter throws to his right, tries to get out of it, and he's going to be dropped for about a eight-yard loss right. by the Tigers. So that really got puts one the stopper hurt, on. You got a kid hurt. Princeton kids hurt. Penalty's up. I think you're right, Tony. Yeah, well, Princeton's not a bad football team now. Uh, they've been playing, uh, they're not a bad football team. They've moved the ball well tonight. This looks like a shotgun passing formation. Uh-oh, it's a Carter. reverse. And again, there's the reverse play that time to Steckline. And it doesn't fool Princeton. Steckline gets maybe three yards on the play, and that's about it. I'm sure Princeton pretty much reading the pass play oh, here. No question. No doubt about it. On a third down in 13, Bluefield really has... Only one thing they can do here is try to throw the ball. Time after the delay of game call, that makes it third down and 17 now for Bluefield. Carter's going to throw the ball. He throws it deep. He's got a man wide open. And that is going to be six points for Bluefield as Todd Benner's wide open at the 10-yard line. The extra.
the point attempt by Arnold is up and it is good. So Bluefield just ahead in this ball game with 8 one to play in the first half. The Bluefield Beavers lead the Princeton Tigers 10 to seven. And Steve Arnold set to get the kick away now for Bluefield and they had all the men in the middle of the field once again, but they're going to go ahead and spread them out into the regular formation now. For instance, Still says we're intimidating, uh, rather expecting an onside kick. And there you have the onside kick, and it will be fielded by the Tigers. So a good heads up play that time well, by the Princeton, Tigers. The reason Princeton didn't go back, uh, Bluefield on that kickoff laid the ball horizontally going from sideline to sideline instead of on the tee and on that you suspect a short kick or a squib type kick. Again out of the wishbone offense. Five man defensive front for Bluefield. Give to number 47 that time is Joe Repass. Not a bad play. Gets about six, five or six each time through there. That was, your, that was your true wishbone, what we call a base play. The base play off the wishbone is the fullback hits up in there hard. You give it to him, fake it to him, go down the line, keep it, or pitch. You, have, you can have three things off your wishbone, which constitutes your true wishbone play. And again, out of the wishbone offense, a receiver split to the right side. play that'll make it a third down and about call it two now for Princeton wishbone offense Lily good, good ball. repass on the he's base play pull back right up to middle he's across the 40 to about the 37 yard line again there's your base play Tony yep right off the you always the true wishbone uh, Pat is your you line up you send your fullback off right guard or left guard quarterback gives it to him or keeps it goes right down the line quarterback ducks in off tackle or else the quarterback pitches to your trailing back And a first down and 10 once again. And a flag immediately thrown on the play. In fact, we may perhaps some kind of, uh, have some kind of a delay of game. No, call. illegal procedure, I'm pretty sure, against Princeton. Okay, we'll have the illegal procedure call go against the Tigers. Or illegal motion. So after the illegal procedure call, that's going to bring up a first down and 15 now for Princeton, trailing 10 to seven to Bluefield. Lilly, straight drop, he's going to be rushed heavily, gets the ball off, and it's nearly picked off that time. They break out of the bone, and the give that time is to repass. He's across the 20, brought down at the 18-yard line, where he's run out of bounds, and there you have uh, Princeton really beginning to get some momentum going on that play. Well, Princeton broke the bone that time. They took one of the halfbacks and set him as a wingback. They brought him across the ball in motion, and Princeton ran uh, the fullback off the side where the man in motion had come from, and they had a real good hole and good blocking out front. This is the same formation set to the opposite side. I bet he runs the bone here, full back up on left side. There he goes. And full back left man side. Through. There you have it. You called it, Tony. A that was just a, about three yards on the play. That was just a twin play, except they set the back to the left side, sent him back in motion right, and they ran to this left side. Lily with a long uh, snap count. That time he's going to be swamped under immediately. Looked like they had perhaps an option play in mind. That was the option play. That was the option play off the broken bone. Sent the man in motion across the ball. Faked the fullback, which they'd been running. But instead of giving to the fullback, the heat kept and the quarterback got sacked. Third down and 13 now for Princeton. The ball resting at the Bluefield 21. Lily throws the ball over the middle and it's going to be intercepted that time. The ball would be into the end zone that time, bringing it out to the 20, but the official looks like it's going to say it's down at the one. How about the momentum carrying him in? Well, that's your ruling. 
that's a judgment call on the part of the official if the momentum carried him in. Uh, then they get the ball on the 20, but if he comes down in the field of play and then goes backwards, and then goes backwards, and the official rules that he has to possess the ball in the field play and then goes down the end zone, it could be that he'd rule the ball there. But here again, if he goes from the field of play into the end zone and is tackled, that becomes a safety. Well, Bluefield's going to have the ball first down at about the half-yard line, and not much else they can do to keep it up as they keep the ball well, on the you, ground. Just using the basic play, of course. The last time they were down here, Bluefield came back and, uh, and threw a long pass that got them out of trouble. And Scott gets the ball. He's across the 10, and he's still going across the 20, and he's finally brought down. for Charles Storrs, then Ronnie Scott may have broken through there for six. Looks like Scott's going to be shaken up a little bit on the play. That's something that I know a defensive coach will tell you is you can't really tackle by pulling the jerseys and jerking the arms. You've got to basically hit him and hit him hard and bring him down, and that's something we saw Princeton doing. Right. It's really not uh, right. coming out there and stacking them up and making the play. There's going to be a clip. Two bitters, and There's going to be a clip. There's the two clips on Bluefield on this one play. 34-yard line, and yes, Tony, it looks like we will. There's two flags. There's going to be two clips. A first down about a mile now. Let's call it 23 yards. And the gift goes to number 11. That's Paul Wallace, and he's across the 13. He's going to be brought down about the 14-yard line. Still going to be about 20 yards short of the first down. Well, as far as Princeton's concerned, last week they had a tough loss to the number one ranked team, the 3A school, that being Stonewall Jackson. We'll get back to that in just a moment. And that time it's Wallace, and he's going to be brought down hard. A good heads-up play as number 23, that Todd Bailey comes storming in, makes a super play for Princeton. So third down and 23 now for Bluefield, and Princeton will have a chance to get the ball back, it looks like, with 1.52 to play in the first half. High formation corner gives to the first man through that time. The ball carrier. 38. Yeah. Trey Steckline on to get the kick away now for Bluefield. Kick is away, correction that time. Todd Benner's handling the punting towards that time. And Princeton will just let the ball bounce as that time Mark Howard says, I don't want any part of it. The ball is down at the 30-yard line, so Princeton yep. will have a chance to perhaps still get something on the scoreboard. Second and nine now for the Tigers. As repass gets the ball and he's brought down. He's going to get maybe two yards on the play. Let's call it third and a long seven, Cody. Well, after the penalty now, that'll make it a third down and 10 for Princeton. With still 27 seconds to play in the first half. The Tigers trailing Bluefield 10 to 7 on our high school game of the week here on NBC WVBA. And there you have it. And Roberts carries. And he stopped. It's going to be about six yards short of the first down making it fourth down and six with 21 seconds left and bluefield calls timeout smith lilly set to get the punt away now for princeton on a fourth down situation and the kick is away it's a short kick it's going to go out of bounds that close to the midfield mark there and it's going to be yes right at the 50 yard line so bluefield with just 15 seconds to play in the first half, they still have a chance to get something on the scoreboard here. Well, Coach Simon it's really It's the same the set they had. They're going to slip 10 out on that side, right down the middle. There he goes. Corner. And he can't find his man, tries to run the ball, and he's brought down. We're going to have a flag, and we either looks like got a clippy maybe on Bluefield or yeah, perhaps a face mask call. 
Well, things have been kind of quiet there, Tony, here in the second quarter after we had our first quarter scuffle, it seemed like, over there on the Princeton uh, bench. I'm sure the officials told them what was going on. And another thing that sort of hurts the ball game, there's been an awful, awful lot of illegal procedures and clipping and uh, penalties such as that. There he goes, deep. Carter, he's going to air it out. He throws it deep, and it's incomplete. And that time, Cole Wallace was who the pass was intended for, and that will end our first half of play, and it was a dandy. Bluefield leading Princeton 10 to 7. We'll be back with a halftime show right after this. The game started out with Princeton taking advantage of the Bluefield turnover, perhaps a little overconfidence early on. Your first half assessment. Well, uh, Beaver had that fumble on the kickoff. Princeton did a good job and went right on and scored. Beaver had a good drive, came back, got the field goal, and then, of course, Beaver hit those two long passes. They went about 99 yards. The two long passes were responsible, got that other touchdown. It's been a good ball game. Two teams are out there. Of course, the only thing that's taken away from the ball game is there's been an unusually large amount of penalties, delay of games, clippings, and those types. But it's a good hard-hitting ball game and still any team's ball game. Again, the backyard brawl. And the third quarter just about set to get underway with Bluefield leading Princeton 10 to 7 on our high school game of the week here on WBBA. Back to Mitchell Stadium on our high school game of the week here on WBBA in Bluefield. As we're just about set to get underway with Bluefield. Steve Arnold set to kick it off. And the kick is away the start of our third quarter. The ball will be fielded by Chris Bailey. And he tries to break out of it across the 10-yard line. And he's going to be brought down at the 13. A football to play. Says this time as identical to the start of the ball game. Nope, the Princeton's got the ball. But Princeton gets the ball this time, and Tony, that looked like an instant replay. It did. The jerseys were a different color as the first play of the ball game. It did. Yeah, and, and yeah, the thing about it, it puts you in a hole, but thank God you have it made. At least you can kick it out if you don't run. Well, Tony, let's go ahead and check out the uh, Princeton offense. We'll do that here in just a moment. Just underway, 11.42 to play in the third quarter. And again, there you have four receivers split to the right side. Smith Lilly, and he keeps it. He's across the 15, bubbles the football, but it's going to go out of bounds. And Tony, while we do have a moment again, let's go ahead and check the uh, Princeton offense. All right, there's Chris Bailey's going to be your split in, and Stu Burke's going to be your tight end. The tackles are Rodiger and Snap. The guards are Thompson and Griffith, and with Ellis at center. Scott Lilly's your quarterback. Repass your fullback, and Mark Howard and Robert uh, Lee Roberts are at your halfbacks. And a fumble on the play. It looks like Bluefield may have got it. And let's see what the official comes up and says. Still no sign. And Bluefield football. I guess it was Lee Roberts on the fumble that time, uh, Tony. And that's something momentum-wise as we see it shift to Bluefield now as they get the ball in very good shape at the 22 of Princeton. Who's run the base play, a power off tackle, no, not a lot of ball handling, just handed it to tailback for right half back, and that was it. But he just evidently, when he got hit, High formation, there's Scott, and he pulls his way across the 15 inside the 14, and that's where he's going to be brought down, so he's going to be about three yards short of the first down. Coach Simon now in his second year at the Bluefield, and 
Tony, I guess last year for him, it was kind of a pretty much a building year. Well, he didn't, get, he didn't get the job until a few days before practice started. Didn't have his staff, and, and he had to get organized. He's, he's much, they're much better organized than they were last year. And straight ahead that time is Todd Bennard. Right. He's brought down at about the 11. It's going to be very close to the first down. Stacy Carter, the quarterback. Full house backfield. And to the first man through, Mike Miller. And he will have the first down now. So Bluefield with a first and goal at the nine yard line. And Coach Trebuco, his Tigers have to stop Bluefield here or else they will go down by 10 points. But All right. Still plenty of time in this ball game. Right, but, but 10 points uh, it makes you change your game plan a little bit. He's gone. He's over. And the, he's over. Wide open that time. Ronnie Scott, as he gets a hole and takes advantage of it all the way down to the two-yard line. Official maybe be down. Oh, that was that was fantastic blocking. And, and Chris Bailey not made a terrific tackle down there. I, I I thought he was in. I just, I tell you, Bluefield line is doing a great job right now. There's uh, down there against a loaded line defensively. They have just moved Princeton people out. And again, as we talked about, a perhaps a more physical, a larger team of Princeton. And straight through that time is Miller. Touchdown, Bluefield. in for six and Bluefield now leads it 16 to 7 the score coming at the 905 mark of the third quarter Trey Steckline on to do the holding and it's a high snap Arnold the kick is away and it is good and Tony while we have a moment again let's go ahead and take a look at that last play and that last touchdown on replay well that lined up in a power eye looks like the, the the powers to the left the quarterback just stepped out gave it to the fullback on a quick hitter right up over right guard and he just went in for that yard it was just a base play down there it looked like he's going to go left but just a fullback up the middle and Steve Arnold set to get the kick away now for Bluefield. The Beavers lead it 17 to seven here in the third quarter. The deep man for Princeton is Chris Bailey. Again, a very good crowd on hand tonight. Anywhere in the area from six to 7,000. Bailey will field it at the eight yard line. Go straight ahead with it. He fumbles the football and Bluefield looks like has recovered. in this ball game, Tony. Oh, big one. If they go in here, Princeton's in trouble. Well, I know Princeton coming off a tough loss last week to the number one team in the state, Stonewall Jackson, and I know this has to be bothering Coach Perbuco trailing 17-7, to and then they turn the ball over once again. Bluefield, the ball in the 23 corner, rolls to his right. He's going to keep the ball and be brought down for about a yard loss, and we've got a flag and perhaps a late hit, Tony. We've got two flags, one on Christian, one on Bluefield. Well, apparently this time, Tony, they flagged the Bluefield bench, perhaps some unsportsmanlike no, conduct. No, during the penalty, you don't have a timeout. The player cannot come to the sideline and talk to the coach, and that's what was happening. The quarterback was over here talking to the coach, and it's a 15-yard penalty. Well, the official is doing a good job, I guess, of keeping this ball game under control tonight. That's one thing they don't want to have is it basically getting out of hand, and they have strapped both teams down and say, boys, if you're going to come out and play some ball and... And we're going to be out here watching you tonight and keeping our eyes out and uh, make sure there's no uh, any kind of unsportsmanlike conduct out there on the field. Carter, great drop, throws the ball over the middle, and it's intercepted! A spectacular play by Charles Norris, and he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Charles Storrs, and there's your tip drill for you, Tony. 
good try. Good, good. And quarterback was shook up on that somewhat. Well, the ball resting at the Princeton 40-yard line as they take over after the interception. Lilly, straight drop, throws the ball down the right side. It's incomplete. Intended that time for Roberts, it looks like, out of the backfield. And that's going to bring up a second down and 10 situation now for Princeton. And for Coach Trebuca, it has to make him feel really, really good now that they've gotten the ball back. And Bluefield was threatening after the turnover by Princeton, but Princeton gets it right back. Well, the thing that hurt, you made, made you change your whole game plan, was the two 15-yard penalties. You made you change the philosophy of offense. Second and 10. And there goes the gift. Repass. Repass. And he gets through about eight yards on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and eight, or third down and two, rather. Third down and two. Uh, Princeton broke the bone. They took one of the halfbacks and set him to wing back. Looked like a passing formation. Ran the base play off the uh, with the fullback right up the middle. Too many men on the field. They better get him off. Third and two. They hurry him off the field just in time. And, and we got it once again. It. And it looks like he's going to have the first down. First and 10 now for Princeton. They bring a man in motion to the left side. And first man through that three pass. He gets about five yards on the play. So that'll bring up a second down and about five now for the Tigers. Coach Trebuco in his sixth year now, his sixth season with the Princeton Tigers, he's been at the helm there, and again, he's no stranger to this classic rivalry in high school football here in West Virginia. Patford Bell again with Tony Colabro, our high school game of the week. And there's three pass, he carries a couple men, and let's see, a bubble on the play. Is there a whistle or not? As number 22 picks it up, and he'll be brought down at the one, but there is a whistle on the play. Momentum stopped that play. Well, it was Mike Kelly who came up with a football. It looks like he basically just robbed him, took the ball and right away from him. Yeah, but actually, the, the forward that. progress of the ball had stopped. The three or four Beaver people were driving him back, and, and once your forward progress is stopped, then you, your play is stopped. Man in motion to the right side. And the first man through that time is Scores, and he's brought down for about a six-yard loss. It looks like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he managed to shake out of it. Well, after the illegal procedure, that's going to back Princeton up five yards, making it second down and 19 now for the Tigers. And again there to the first man through. Repass. Repass. He'll be lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And uh, Tony, again, while we have a moment, uh, as far as a college coach now, a lot of these gentlemen are seniors out here on the field. What are you looking for as far as the talent out on this field tonight? Well, the first thing you look for is a kid that's aggressive. And then uh, the second thing you're looking for is if he's an athlete. And the thing that you hope that he has more than anything is speed. Then you can work from there. Of course, you're always looking for size. But the first thing I look for is attitude and aggression. Stores motion to the left side. They throw down the right sideline. It's incomplete. Intended that time for Chris Bailey. And Trey Steckline was right in on the play for Bluefield. Smith Lilly set to get the kick away. Trey Steckline, the deep man. A great Blue kick. Field, a great kick, and Steckline's just going to let the ball go, but he decides to pick it up now. Across He's the gone. Ball. Ball. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. And it looks like he may go. 40. It's a foot race. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. Touchdown. <laughs> Trey Steckline goes all the way, had a wall in front of him, 
Looks like there's a penalty here. Looks like we may have a flag, though, so hold everything. And we didn't see the flag. It was on the near sideline here. And it's a wood backfield now for the Beavers. And there's Scott. He'll get to about the 45-yard line where he's brought down. And again for Princeton now, they're coming, as I mentioned off earlier, which I didn't get a chance to uh, continue what I was saying, uh, coming off the tough loss to Stonewall Jackson. And their attitude pretty much coming into this ball game, having talked to Coach Trebuco of the Tigers, is they wanted to bounce back, basically after an embarrassment last week, come back and regain some poise that they had lost last week in the loss to Stonewall Jackson. There's Scott, he's across midfield. He's gone. He's got a couple blockers. He's gone. He's down the left side, across the 40. He may go into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Ronnie Scott picks that ball up and goes, Unofficially, it looks like about 55 yards. Oh, it was great run. for play. Great run. So Bluefield now leads it 23 to 7 over the Tigers with 2.57 to play in the third quarter on our high school game of the week here on WVBA. Pat Frizzell again with Tony Colabro. Steve Arnold set to get the kick away, the extra point. And it is no good. However, Bluefield now leads it 23 to 7. Tony, we've got a moment. Again, let's check it out on replay. It was just a lead-off tackle left. Had great blocking at the hole. Had great blocking at the hole. Picked up a, a good block on the halfback. Broke a tackle and then I tell you, uh, once he got out there 10, 15 yards to pass, I thought he was going to go all the way because the kid has got great quickness and a lot of agility. And I'll tell you, one-on-one -on -one out in the midfield or out in the secondary, he's a tough young to bring it down. Well, they've got one of the full out backfield. In fact, Ronnie Scott on the season, he averages 6.1 yards a carry. Mike Miller, number 38, he averages 5.8 yards a carry. And Trey Steckline, he averages 8.2 yards a carry. So they've got some guys in the backfield who can really motor it and move out, that's for sure. Again, Ronnie Scott, a super touchdown run that time. Three to seven, the Beavers lead the Tigers in the third quarter. That's in the end zone. And the kick is away. A super kick that time yeah. by Arnold. It'll go into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. High formation. Lily throws the ball. It's complete. And a great catch that time by number 47. That still repass out of the backfield. And that's something that obviously Princeton can do is quit. You still got plenty of time in this oh, ball game. That's something that they may have done last week against Stonewall Jackson is the game started to get a little out of hand and perhaps maybe a little intimidated by that Stonewall Jackson team and well, you they need, took advantage of that. You need, uh, what you really need here is, is I'm sure if they get a touchdown, two touchdowns and go for two both times gives you 16 points with your seven with your seven that you have and they'll give you your 23 to tie so they get two big two touchdowns and two big extra points can tie the ball game if not they're going to have to score three ways and but really I, I don't believe uh, i'll tell you bluefield is super fired up now you brought up an interesting point tony as far as uh, up front now on, on the lines and uh, kind of surprising. You did mention that Bluefield was basically whipping them up front. That kind of is a shock considering the fact that Princeton a little bit larger of a team out there. Smith Lilly, there's the option play. And that time it's Robert. On the option, uh, Pat on that big versus small. All right, number one, if you get a 250-pounder in high school, he's a 16 or 17-year-old. He's not strong in, as far as endurance and all, and he, he tends to uh, get tired quickly. But now, if you're quick, 
if you're quick and you can make contact with those big people, then you stop their momentum and, and you can work it. Uh, I'm not all shook up about high, uh, weight and height. Uh, quickness I love. And there's the option to the left side. And that time, Mark Howard's not going to go anywhere with it. And uh, Princeton definitely needs to do something here and do it quick. Trailing 23 to 7 with 36 seconds to play in the third quarter. Lilly, straight drop, throws down the right sideline. He's got his man, and it's nearly intercepted. The pass intended that time for Chris Bailey. And perhaps he Bell did a good job. Laid good it up job. there just a little bit too much. And Bailey was wide open there at one point, but incomplete. Right, the ball was thrown too high, and Louis Belt, safety man, was able to go over there, and since it was high, he was able to go a great distance and made a good play. First man through that time is repassed, and he's still going. He fumbles the football, and it's Stickline picks it up. He's across the 40, across the 30, down the right side, still going, and he's finally brought down at the 12-yard line by Joe Repass. And again, the turnover will kill you. That's something that Princeton has had major problems with here in the last 10 minutes of this ball game is simply turning the football over, Tony. Yep, and we've got another flag. So if Bluefield can punch it in here, then they will be in command of this ball game. Again, three men in the backfield. Carter, and there's Scott. He's inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. And that's going to end our third quarter of play. So Bluefield in command, leading 23 to 7. Stay with us all for more of the high school game of the week here on WBBA. The Bluefield Beavers lead Princeton 23 to 7. Second and goal now at the three for Bluefield. Quarter at quarterback, and there's a penalty flag. Well, the illegal procedure call backs Bluefield up five yards, making it second and goal at the eight. There's the option to Scott. He's across the five. Touchdown, Bluefield. Perfectly executed option play that That's time, absolutely Tony. Absolutely perfect. I'll tell you, I hate to say it, but uh, right now, Beaver's just sky high and, and, and Princeton is down. Steve Arnold set to attempt the extra point, and it is right down the middle. So with 11.53 to play in the ball game, Bluefield in command, they lead Princeton 30 to seven. Well, Bluefield with 30 unanswered points in this ball game. It started off with the Beavers fumbling the opening kickoff and Princeton capitalizing on the Bluefield turnover. But all of a sudden, with 11.53 to play in the game, it's Bluefield 30, Princeton 7. And Bailey will field the ball. And he's dropped at the 21-yard line. They break out of the wishbone. Man in motion to the left side. That's Roberts. Straight drop. Lily throws the ball. It's incomplete. Store is in motion to the left side. And there's the pitch inside to number 23, Todd Bailey. And a fine pickup of about 12 yards on the play. And I guess your coach, Simon, uh, got to be feeling pretty good right now. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're relaxed. They're relaxed. relaxed. No doubt about it. Billy, he gets a heated rush and throws the ball. This bitch just throws it away. And that will bring up a third down and nine now for Princeton. Well, after back-to-back five-yard penalties, it'll make it a third and 19. It would have been a first down. But the penalties wipe it out. Break out of the wishbone. Lily straight drop. He gets again the heated rush. 
tries to scramble out of it. From the 20, he's going to run the ball. Across the 30, still going, and he's brought down on the fourth sideline. Still going to be about five yards short of the first down. Tony, who do you think has the most uh, most yards in this ball game, huh? That's the essentials have got quite a few, I'll guarantee you that. Uh, it's been a good offensive show. I, I just, no one likes to see a ball game. What you'd hope is to play a whole ball game without a flag, but we must have had at least 20, 25 flags tonight. Well, Tribuco squad will go for it on a fourth down and two now at the, their own 42. Lilly keeps it, and he's not going to get it. As Bluefield, it looks like, will hold. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. So on comes the Princeton defense to try to stop this Bluefield offensive attack once again, who's pretty much been in command here in the second half. First and 10 now for the Beavers. The pitch goes to Scott on the right side. And he's across the 35 down to about the 31 yard line. High formation. Carter toss to the left side. Goes to Louis Belt. And he's going to pick up maybe a yard on the play. That's about it. So perhaps we're going to see some uh, second teamers in the lineup now for Fred Simon well, Beaver. Listen, if you can't reward kids who've been out there all year, August, practicing, when you give them a chance to play, uh, you just got to reward them. They deserve to play. The game, it looks like it's well in hand, and I admire Coach Simon for what he's doing. And that quarterback now for Bluefield is Floyd Ray as he replaces Stacy Carter. 7.24 to play in the ball game. Ray, he's going to roll to his right. Looks like he's going to keep the ball, and he'll have the first down. He's inside the 20, down to maybe the 19. Let's see what the official's going to mark it. There's a penalty. Probably, let's see, the 21 There's yard line. There's another penalty. Fourth down now for Bluefield, and they're going to go ahead and go with it as Ray tosses to Louis Belt, and he's still going, tries to struggle out of it. And it's still going to be about 11 yards short of the first down. Well, if Bluefield can hold on here, then their record would improve to six and two, while Princeton would drop to five and three. And perhaps, Tony, you can explain to us just a little bit about the playoff setup and how exactly it works in West Virginia. Well, uh, if you beat a team in class, you being AAA, you automatically get 10 points. Then if you beat a for every team that they've beat in class, you get additional points. At the end of the year, uh, you compute, and the teams with the highest rating are going to be in the playoffs. We send eight to the playoffs, and right now Bluefield is in is in pretty good shape, uh, assuming they can they can pick up a lot of points from Logan and East Bank. But they've got to win those games. When you lose three, you're almost eliminated. And the pass is complete that time to Bailey. Lily throws the ball, is complete to Bailey, and he'll get to about the 49-yard line where he's dropped. And again, a handkerchief, Tony. Well, too many men on the field for Bluefield, so that'll bring up a first down and 10 now for the Tigers. Lily throws the ball, it's overthrown. Intended that time for Robert. For 82, Stu Burks And let's see a correction there. That's Stu Burks. Lily gets some heat, throws the ball down the left side, and it's just overthrown. He had his man, Chris Bailey, and it's just incomplete. Lily, great drop, throws to the left side, and it's tipped and incomplete. He tried to find Todd Bailey, and a good heads-up play that time by the Beavers. Yeah. Lilly, he's in trouble, and he's going to try to scramble out of it. He's being chased by about six white shirts, and he throws the ball, and it's nearly intercepted. 
That time intended for Toby Lucas. Ray handoff inside, and that's Mike Miller, and he struggles all the way inside the 42 about the 36 yard line. Correction. That time it's Richard Schuch. First and 10, Bluefield. Handoff inside. Again, that was Shoot. Shoot. Yes, keeping and it pretty simple. Keeping it basic. Second down and a long nine now for Bluefield. The ball resting on the Princeton 36-yard line. Well, I, I'm sure that uh, Coach Simon is going to do the best he can to get every squad member in this game at some point. We uh, he's have a new quarterback at this point. Again, Pat Frizzell with Tony Collabro on our high school game of the week here on WVBA in Bluefield. And that time is... He's gone. He's Cole gone. Mullen. He cuts to the right side, back to the left. Ten, foot race to the corner. Touchdown. But hold everything, Tony, as the official has dropped the hanky once again. Oh, my goodness. And the penalty wipes it out, makes it a second down and four. And that time Richard Shoup again. And he'll be very close to the first down. Second down and 10 now for Bluefield. The toss to the right side to Kelly Ashley. And he's across the 20 inside the 18 to about the 17 yard line. He's still going to be a couple yards short of the first down. Well, the stadium, I know Tony has quite a bit of history. Mitchell Stadium, perhaps you can fill us in a little bit on it. Well, it was uh, built back, uh, way back there with the WPA project. And of course, part of it was built uh, later on on the other side, away from the press box. And uh, of course, it's been home field for the Beavers for years. There's been uh, many great college games here. You used to have uh, VPI come in here, William and Mary and teams such as that, Marshall. So it was a sight. But, of course, with your modern stadiums that you have on these campuses, we haven't had any major college games here in here. Charles goes to the left side. And it looks like we had a face, face mask, mask. And that's exactly what we're going to get if Paul Wallace was grabbed and brought down. But that's going to cost Princeton 15 yards on the face mask. One minute, 50 seconds to play in the game. The clock's still moving. Be sure to stay with us for our post-game show. And straight ahead goes Shoup, and touchdown, Bluefield! Well, the crowd chanting Shoup, Shoup, as he goes into the end zone, giving Bluefield a 36-7 lead over Princeton. Score comes at the 141 mark of the fourth quarter. The kick is away by Arnold, and it is good. So Bluefield now leads it by 30 over Princeton, 37 to 7. Lee Roberts, the deep man for Princeton, as Steve Arnold set to get the kick away for the Beavers. I'm sure there won't be anything fancy here, as Bluefield pretty much in command, of course, leading by 30 over Princeton. Arnold, the kick is away, will be fielded by Roberts, and he's across the 20, he's going to be brought down at the, or is he? At the 29 as he struggles for about six more yards where Bluefield brings him down. Second down and eight now for Princeton. New quarterback into the lineup is Chris Sylvester and he's sacked back at the 13 yard line. Three seconds to play, two, one. And there's the ball game as Bluefield wins the 1987 bragging rights of Mercer County. The backyard brawl, they call it. 
Bluefield holds on, pulls away in the second half to defeat Princeton 37 to 7. We'll be back with a post-game show right after this. With Tony Colabro and a pleasure to have with us the winning coach tonight of Bluefield High School, Fred Simon and coach. Man, I tell you, you probably didn't expect this kind of ball game. You blew it open in the second half. Well, they had a couple of turnovers in that second half, and it affected their game plan a little bit. We recovered a couple of fumbles, got the lead on them, and they had to go to a passing game instead of those running behind those big horses there, and that, that sure was our advantage in the second half. Coach Garlebro, obviously, uh, Bluefield, this has to be a big momentum boost for the team, and, and really it's uh, kind of unexpected, like I said, uh, to come against uh, a team again like Princeton and blow it open there in the second half. Well, I, I just thought Bluefield was well-prepared mentally. I'm not saying uh, statistically or strategy point they weren't, but they were prepared mentally, and the thing that I thought that made it is when, when Bluefield was behind 7-3, took that ball and complete those two long passes and was able to go all the way down and get that 10 to, 10 to 7 lead, uh, which was great. And of course, second half, they capitalized on several breaks and uh, boom, that was the ball game. What exactly does this do uh, for your team, Coach? Obviously, the big heated rivalry here at Mercer County. It has to be a big momentum boost here with week number, uh, I guess we've got week nine coming up. Well, anytime you win and beat a good rivalry like Princeton, it's going to help your football team. And I tell you what, I'm awful proud of our kids. They did a good job in there and hung in there. We got behind early, could have folded, but we hung in there and came back, and I'm awful proud of our kids. Again, it has to be, uh, you know, you've got the bragging rights now, and it's Princeton Bluefield, but you really can't enjoy it too much. You've got to continue to play football. Two weeks still to go. You've still got that chance to get into the playoffs. Well, we've got an awful good football team coming up next week in Logan, and we got to go down there, and we know it's going to be an awful good test for us. So uh, it doesn't get weird. We'll enjoy this game tonight and then get ready for it again tomorrow, next day for Logan. Coach Colabro, the keys for Bluefield here on out. What are they going to be? Oh, well, I tell you, Bluefield's got a lot of weapons. Uh, uh, Stacy Carter makes them dangerous. Now, he's got some good backs, but Stacy can throw that bomb for you. Anytime you have a kid that can loosen up a defense as well as he does, then that's going to help. And you take these backs that Bluefield got, if they get through that line of scrimmage, they're capable of going all the way. Coach Simon, again, congratulations on our high school Thank game of the lot. week Thank here on lot. WVVA. Thank and you, Tony Colabro, again, <laughs> certainly a pleasure working with you tonight. And once again, our final score tonight, Bluefield. Now, at Ramey's and Tazewell, deals so hot they'll...